How many of you have this? Why do you have it? And most importantly, how do you use it? How many of you have seen a family gathered around a dining table, getting ready to eat, but all of them are on their phones? Or two friends sitting side by side, not having a conversation, but on their phones? Compared to the millennials, 1977 to 1995, who barely had any devices they could get addicted to, we are suddenly given these devices and the distractions that come with them. Now think about it. Is it common for people to be seen without their phones? At home? On trains? Even on the street where they're walking? No. Phones are everywhere and they're growing. There are dangers to this collective use of technology. Let me talk about a story where a lady visited an event organized by social media. There were all these influencers, people who'd spent half their lives telling others to stay off their devices and to live life in the real world. Now these very influencers, instead of heading for people to make real connections, headed for the most Instagram-worthy spots, snapped pictures of themselves, and posted it on their social media. Now this lady tried to walk around, trying to talk to all the interesting new people, but wherever she went, no one seemed to have time to talk to her because everyone was too busy on their phones. According to the Global Web Index, the average daily time spent on social media alone is 2 hours and 24 minutes, when the recommended time on devices overall is only 2 hours. So you see, just our time on social media exceeds that limit. A story from ABC News is about a girl who got caught up in the wrong side of social media. Brooke a 12-year-old, got an iPhone for her birthday. In the sixth grade, she started to get obsessed. She had all kinds of apps, Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, you name it and she'd have it. She'd stay up to 4.30 waiting for someone's message. It got so bad that in the end, she started to feel signs of depression and suicidal thoughts. So you see, the overuse of digital devices can result in psych major psychological issues such as depression or much, much worse. An American think tank called the Pew Research Center and the NIH, National Institute of Health, have linked these disorders with the high level of social media use. You know the feeling when you're scrolling down your social media feed and an ad pops up, and you get annoyed, right? Well, here's the thing. These advertisers pay the social media platforms to put in their ads so that we would see them. And when we see them, there's a little chance we might like what we see, get interested in it, and maybe even buy it. And when we buy it, there's a slight chance, when, there's a slight chance we might buy it and when we buy it, they are getting the money they paid earlier back. So our attention is the product that is being sold to advertisers. Speaking of business, we often find that we like our feed so much, we don't want to put it down. First, it recommends us two videos we want to watch. Just a little while longer. Then it recommends us four more a little while longer. And I'm sure more than half of you have wondered, how does it know what I want to watch? Well, this is tech we're talking about. When you click on something, a post or a video, that click is saved, and that social media platform identifies the category of video or post you watched, and uses that to keep recommending you those things over and over again on your feed, since that is what makes them profit. In other words, they use algorithms. And if you're wondering what algorithms are,
they're a way of sorting out the user's feed based on what they watch and recommending them videos. This tracking and data brings us to our next point. Another point we need to discuss is online privacy. As I said earlier, our data is being tracked. To be able to keep us on the screen, they need data about us, and they have it. They have data about us, but we need to think about what they do with that data. This is where privacy comes into play. They are tracking our use online, and our privacy isn't secure anymore. In order to keep certain information private, there are settings you can do. For example, when you open up a brand new Instagram or Facebook account, the settings usually haven't been activated. So turning them on can give you a little bit more privacy. But if these social media platforms are constantly tracking our use online, then how do we protect our privacy completely? Well, we can't, and we have no choice. Now, social media is just a tool a tool that is currently being programmed to take advantage of our psychology. I would like to talk about one more problem. For all Gen Zs, have you heard of bedtime procrastination? Bedtime procrastination is when you give up some of your sleeping time to do something else. And in this case, to use that time to do things like watching TikTok late into the night until you suddenly realize it is 5 a.m. By a show of hands, who thinks that sleep is important? It is really important, and us giving up some of that time to do something else is a sign of addiction. According to the Sleep Health Foundation, data collected from over 85,000 teenagers proves that the overuse of devices is resulting in less sleep. And when we think about it, a couple of years ago, people used to read before sleeping, but now, Devices are our replacements for books, too. We are starting to use these devices more and more, but do you see how our use is increasing? We are changing our lifestyle and the way we live. Now, hearing everything I've said so far, you must be thinking, I'm telling you to get rid of social media right now. But that is not the case at all. What I am saying is that we use it intentionally, purposefully, consciously, in other words, mindfully. And now what does that mean? When we do something mindfully, we do it so that we have control over our use there, and in this case, over social media. We can fight this urge of addiction. We can control our use online, and here's how. Firstly, turn notifications off. Next, educate the people around you about the dangers of overusing devices. Lastly, especially, educate children about how limiting our use online can be beneficial to us. Next, we can find other things to do on social media. For example, we can use it, but set limits for ourselves. Have a purpose for going there. Be conscious when you use it so that it's a privilege, not a habit. Lastly, let's use our strengths to find what we are good at. Think about it. What are you good at and what do you enjoy? As you can see, these devices may be very important and useful, but having control over ourselves is really important. We may wish to scroll through social media for an unlimited amount of time, and we may want to keep up with the newest iPhone trends, but having control over ourselves is really important. We have our own priorities and goals, and meeting them is our responsibility. So let's all make sure to use these devices in a way that makes them a privilege, not a habit. Thank you.